Thanks, Chrissy. And our next speaker has actually covered a lot of geography in a very short period of time. Just seven years ago, Leah Treat worked for the Transportation Department in the District of Columbia. She then moved to Chicago before settling on the West Coast three years ago as the Director of Transportation and Mobility for Portland. At this rate, I think she's going to become the Director of the Hawaii Department of Transportation soon. And like Chrissy, she also brought along her two dogs. So I'm sensing a trend here. Under Leah's leadership, Portland became the first city in the country to adopt design standards that require protected bike lanes in new developments. OK, maybe Portland is the kind of place where you expect to find these kinds of ideas and designs. But Leah's doing more than keeping Portland streets weird. She's making them safer and making the city a model for smart, sustainable transportation policy. Leah. Thank you. All right, hello, everybody. Um, it's really awesome to be here and share the stage with other women leaders. It's really cool that we're kicking it off this way. Yes. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to be the transportation director in the weirdest and most progressive city in the country. So first, we have some really interesting stakeholders. We have this fire-breathing, bag-piping unicyclist in a Darth Vader mask, thousands and thousands of naked bike riders, but also tens of thousands of kids in our Safe Routes program. Safe Routes in Portland has increased bike, walking and biking to school by 35%. And as the director, I also get to hang out with some really interesting people. <laughs> don't, don't be surprised. This is Portland, so of course I've met Sasquatch. <laughs> and I've also met TV stars. This was the highlight of my career, I think. I was an extra on Portlandia. <laughs> but I also get to spend time with thousands and thousands of Portlanders, kids, families, seniors, bikers, walkers, rollers, who come out to our five Sunday parkways each summer. Last year, over 120,000 people participated. Sunday Parkways is definitely one of the most fun ways to promote active transportation and open streets. I also get to do really cool things like repelling from our aerial tram during an evacuation drill. Six strapping firefighters catching my fall, sign me up. But seriously, the tram is a very vital part of our transportation system. It has provided more than 150,000 trips and covered a distance long enough to go around the earth more than 11 times. I also lead an organization that puts down the most amazing bike lane art. And I have a staff that shows their appreciation for me like this. I celebrated the opening of the Tillicum Crossing, the largest car-free bridge in the country. The Tillicum Crossing allowed us to complete the loop on our streetcar. It's a transit system that carries 15,000 riders a day, and almost 40% of those riders are coming from a household that doesn't own a car. I also got to launch Bike Town. All right. There are advantages to being the 65th city in the country to launch Bike Share. We did capitalize on the latest technology, and now we have the country's largest smart bike system. In the last two months, users have biked over 230,000 miles, and I can safely say that orange is Portland's new favorite color. When we do great things like launch Bike Town, people find the cutest ways to express their appreciation. They send us pictures of their dogs and cats. and they make donuts for us. The donut that was made here was to celebrate the opening of Ankeny Plaza. This plaza is Portland's newest public space. We took an unnecessarily wide roadway, roadway and reallocated it as space for people to enjoy. We added a bike town station and street furniture, and we shared crossings to make the, changed crossings to make the area safer too. And what makes this a very, very Portland project is it wasn't really our idea. It was spearheaded by a coalition of open streets advocates and local businesses. 
Two years ago, they organized a successful three-day demonstration project to show the site's potential. And working with us this year, they have permanently transformed the space for the better. Portland is also home to a very highly mobilized and very savvy transportation constituency of neighborhood advocates, nonprofits, community organizations, and really wannabe transportation wonks. In a city of 630,000 people, 629,000 are either urban planners or transportation engineers. <laughs> but thanks in part to this constituency, we passed a local gas tax this year. In fact, it is the largest local gas tax in the country. <laughs> You're messing up my timing, by the way. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to look. It's going to raise $64 million over the next four years. Um, the success of our Fixing Our Streets campaign illustrates some key changes taking place in Portland. They're going to have a very profound effect on our future. And the first is safety. As Portland grudgingly accepts more and more Californians, there's a growing constituency for more livable and safer streets. That's why almost half of our funds are going to go for safety improvements citywide. And the second major change is the growing importance of equity. Portland is experiencing a demographic sea change. Our Latino population is growing at a rate much faster than any other state in the country, and we have large refugee populations in growing immigrant communities from Southeast Asia and Russia. Many of these communities are located on the outer edges of Portland, and our job is to ensure that they have the same mobility options as communities closer to the central city. So we are using an equity lens in everything that we do. For our Vision Zero plan, we've made a pledge. We will get to zero road deaths without racial profiling. Being a director is certainly not without its challenges, and there are many days that make me look like this. <laughs> I look like that a lot when I think about the fact that Portland's population is growing, our road space is not. And if we don't want to choke on our own congestion, we're going to have to get people out of their cars. I'm very hopeful that we're going to make progress along that way because of initiatives like the Smart Cities Challenge. We were very honored to be a Smart City Cities finalist, and although we didn't win, the challenge has spurred new partnerships, and we are committed to accelerating the introduction of new transportation technologies into our system, like autonomous and connected vehicles. And I'm also hopeful because the trends that we're tracking show us going in the right direction. Portlanders still rely far too much on single occupancy vehicles, but that reliance is dropping. These trends confirm for me that our work on building more bike lanes, increasing our transit options, launching Bike Town, and similar initiatives are emphasize, and emphasizing active transportation are paying off. And when I think about that, I feel like this. <laughs> 